you're, you've been at the forefront of promoting the startup visa. I'm so grateful. As Thanks. someone who, who battled with the venture industry in Europe, I say good work you. In Europe, it's much more difficult to gain venture funding for both men and women who often feel shut out of the possibilities of the venture game. So this is such a great cause and I support you wholeheartedly. Could you, could you give us a quick update as to the progress of this, this project visa? Sure, and, and the startup visa is the same phenomena that we're talking about yes. with, with women, right? I mean, yes. I think it's the reason I got excited about this notion for a startup visa was I thought it was absolutely stupid, not, not, not just mediumly dumb, you know, not just short-sighted, just stupid, yes. that in the United States we would make it difficult for somebody who wanted to be an entrepreneur that was a foreigner to come start their company in the U.S. It just yes. never made sense to me. Yes. And, you know, there's a whole sort of long litany of reasons around immigration and around stuff that makes no sense yes. uh, from a job perspective because, of course, entrepreneurs are creating companies that didn't previously exist, which generates jobs which didn't previously exist. Yes. But it's, it's the same thread. And, and for me personally, you know, I think that anybody uh, that wants to start a company uh, should be able to, the barriers, it's already hard enough to create a company and be successful, you should eliminate as much of the barriers as you possibly can. Yes. Where the startup visa is at, it's, you know, we started talking about it a little bit more than a year ago. Um, there are two active bills, uh, one in the House and one in the Senate. Great. They're both still in committee, uh, which what that means in, in the U.S. government for foreign viewers is that uh, the bills are actually real bills that have sort of gotten past the initial vetting process but they still haven't sort of gotten to the point where anybody takes a vote on them. So they're still far away from becoming law. Okay. And because of sort of the election cycle and the dynamics of how politics is working in the U.S. right now, um, because the startup visa touches on a visa, it gets wrapped into the entire immigration reform debate, which is a very contentious, very wide-ranging debate, very polarized yes. And I think our general sense at this stage, especially since we have elections coming up, nothing's going to happen between now and the elections, is that, you know, it'll be a 2011 issue. Okay. And our, our hope is that sometime in 2011, uh, immigration uh, reform starts to become something that's focused on and more important. And obviously, from a jobs creation entrepreneurial perspective, uh, we hope that uh, the startup visa starts to pick up some speed from that. Brilliant. And thank you again for um, putting this forward and, and for all your support for it and for European entrepreneurs. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to thank you again for your time today, Brad. I really, really appreciate your feedback. You're, you're really such a star out there in the community, in the entrepreneurial community. And I've learned so much um, for years, actually, from your blog. So I do Thanks. appreciate you. You know, I, I really appreciate it. I mean, one, one thing I'd end on, and, and I, I sort of put this from, again, uh, something that's come from the work we've done at, uh, at NCWIT, yeah. is, you know, it's, it, it, there's not, it's not really a right or wrong issue around, you know, sort of the women in technology argument, which is what a lot of people uh, make it out to be. Yes. Um, you know, essentially, men and women own all the cultural dynamics. Yes. And, and we've created it, and the biases, yes. you know, have emerged societally. Yes. And I think it's, you know, in, in 2010, there's no question that women who enter uh, into technology cultures will have a harder time of it. There is a bias against it right now. Right. And, you know, hard is just what it is. It's more difficult. And yes. we can all learn from that. And part of what we need to learn from that is how to lower the biases so that there isn't artificial difficulty in the process. Yes, um, I read a post on the funded.com earlier today where um, a, a comment that someone was saying that actually um, you need to be an explorer to be an entrepreneur and that generally it's men that are the explorers and I hate hasten to to actually refute that because <laughs> because I think there's a lot of us women who have incredible um, explorer sort of uh, focus and um, you know I think that we can all do it together like you said so I, I, totally, I totally agree I mean yeah. statements like that just make my 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 head hurt right yeah I mean, what, what a so, ridiculous bias men are traditionally explorers it's just a dumb statement <laughs> it's <laughs> back so, in the caveman time <laughs> yeah, it, it, the only thing you could do is call it out and say there's yes. nothing you know that, yeah of course women behave differently and do things <laughs> differently than men but so does 
<laughs> so do I from my partner Jason, who sits in the next office. To yes, we're exactly. Things. We're all different, and we should embrace those differences yes. and move off of them. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you. For, thank you for bringing this, you know, th this topic to life with the, the interviews you've been doing. I appreciate that as well. Thank you, Brad. Okay. Bye. Bye.